Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to talk about thrust bearings. What are they? So, might be a question in your mind. If it's not a question in your mind, maybe it should be. So, sort of long story short, a thrust bearing is an axial bearing. What's an axial bearing, you might ask? Well, an axial bearing is one that works on sort of a horizontal loading force. Now, if we take a regular bearing, these are radial bearings. This is a uh, 608ZZ bearing. So the idea is, is there's going to be weight applied on the external radii of this, which is going to be transferred through bearings, you know, i.e. little balls inside there, to the inner um, which is going to pressure on the shaft. So I'm going to have, you know, force coming down technically on top or the bottom, depending upon, you know, where the load is, that's going to be transferred to the center of this. However, if I put something on top, that's obviously not going to work. And this is where uh, a, th a thrust bearing comes into play. Now, I needed to get these for the... Um, uh, uh, micro mill build. Let me explain this a little bit better with a picture. Okay, so I brought a couple aids to help me. So one of the pieces, so here's the z-axis for the the uh, micro uh, mill that I've put together. Now before we get to the little bit of the whiteboard, I want to show you this. So here is the table, which I have the table, make sure I'm getting it in the frame over here. And you see how this pulls down like this. And when I uh, push it up, what's going to happen is the back side of this is going to hit. There's a, there's a bushing in here that it's going to hit against. But on the converse side, when I go to push this down, this needs something to push against here in order for it to actually move this down. Because this rod has this rod and i.e. right here, has to remain stationary. So it needs something to push against. Now, in the regular design, it simply used these uh, wheels uh, up against here to provide that pressure. But w since I'm going to a stepper motor, that pressure is going to be lost. So I'm not going to be able to move the table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, on the lathe... Um, some couplers here, but that coupler is going to have to come down to here and I'm going to have to transfer the load. In other words, it's going to have to be able to push against this. Now, in this case, you know, it's just a cheap Chinese, you know, micro mill. Uh, it just rubs and the friction builds up here as it rubs against the surface. And so what I'm going to do is replace this or in, in, um, use a thrust washer. So as we have here sort of in the uh, whiteboard picture we have the carriage itself we have the uh, thrust bearing here in green we have the motor assembly so this will actually push against that thrust uh, bearing to transfer the load and so this will reduce the friction now one of the things I'll see if I can't zoom in so you notice I have a bearing set of bearings in a, in a kind of a flat washer assembly and then I've got two races and then what happens is this actually goes in between these two races and then when pressure is applied downward on these bearings it turns freely so it actually turns I can put a lot of force and it still turns very nice smoothly as opposed to this was really herky-jerky I mean you know yeah even if I was going to keep these I probably would put a set of thrust uh, bearings in here and there's plenty of shaft in there to do it. So even if you don't do this, you can still do this. Now, one of the things with these uh, uh, thrust bearings that I did is this is a four millimeter shaft. And so uh, one of the things with this shaft, it, the, the bearings were really expensive. Now, a viewer did write in on a previous um, episode where I disassembled this and I talked about it. And gave me a link to where they were about two bucks a piece, which isn't bad because most of the bearings I was finding in this size were about ten bucks a piece. So big price difference. But I got these for about a, uh, a buck a piece. I think actually less. Uh, now the link to these down below. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to um, 3D print. I, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to 3D print or cut it into the. Um, uh, the the coupler and I may do the latter cut it into the coupler on the lathe that goes in here because I'm going to use some half inch aluminum bar stock for my coupler 
uh, to go in here and use that because they're so cheap. And I need three of them, you know. So when I was looking at ten bucks a piece, I was going, "Wow, thirty bucks for you know bearings." And then, you know, I mean, the whole thing only cost you know two hundred. So um, I didn't like that price point, but for less than a buck, I'm in. And again, I can 3D print or cut on the lathe a bushing to use in the um, uh, situation here. So, anyways. So this is where you would use a thrust bearing, uh, you know, in different applications like this where you have to distribute a axial force rather than a radial force. So hopefully kind of explained what a thrust bearing is. You see a lot of these in CNC machines, etc. So hopefully you found it interesting. If you did, hey, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget the bell button over there, which is really a reminder to hit the bell down below uh, so you get new notifications when I put out new videos. Also, don't forget the swag shop up there, and we'll see you in the next video where we talk about something else cool. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.